Once upon a time, in a land far, far away, there was a queendom. Now, you probably have heard of kingdoms where a king rules the land. This was a queendom, and you can guess a queen ruled the land. This queen was loving and benevolent. It was a great place to live. People flocked to, that, to this queendom from all over the world to live there. The people who lived there were very proud of their queendom, and they loved and they honored their queen. As I said, people would come from all over the world, especially people who lived in countries where they didn't really have it so good. However, the queendom had a couple of problems. One was they didn't have enough people to do all the jobs that there were to do there. Actually, to make the queendom complete, they would need all the people from all over the world in every nation to come and live in the queendom because every person brings a different gift and ability to contribute to the queendom. Every person in the world is actually a piece of the queendom puzzle. So since they were lacking people, they were lacking the gifts and talents that those people would bring that would make the queendom complete. Now while the queen would welcome refugees from other countries, nations, it wasn't enough. So the queen sent out an invitation to all the people from all over the world, from all the nations, and said, you are wanted, you are needed, and you are welcome. Come and be a part of our queendom. Some came, and for some reason, some didn't. Each person who came were welcomed with open arms, and each were given a magic cloak. This cloak gave each of them a different ability to make the queendom complete. For example, some were given the ability to teach. Some were given the ability to grow food. Um, some were given the ability to make very good wine, which is very important. Another was given the ability to heal. The newcomers and the original people all wore their cloaks with pride, giving honor to the queen. They were so happy, they felt so fulfilled to be able to contribute to this wonderful community. Everyone but one, and there's always one, right? There was one that had the ability to heal, heal people that were very sick. But he didn't want to do it. He didn't like that. He didn't, he didn't like having the cloak on, said it didn't fit right, didn't like the queen. He didn't want to heal people. He just wanted to live in the queendom. And he, uh, who could blame him, really? Who wouldn't want to live in this land? It was a very cool place, had all the latest technology, plenty of food, free health care, great wine, lots of benefits for everyone, and everyone got to play a part in that kingdom, and everyone was appreciated. Imagine the kingdom of God can be compared to this queendom, where everyone's invited, wonderful community, lots of benefits, everyone has a part to play, everyone is appreciated. Some may join, and some may not. All are given a magic cloak, or maybe it's a wedding robe, or maybe it's baptism. They are all given a way to contribute. And the ways to contribute are endless. Each person has a different way to contribute. All are welcomed, appreciated, but all are different. Each has a different way to contribute. Maybe it's at different times or different places, different situations, different skills, different abilities. What's your magic cloak give you? 
What does your baptism enable you to do? Do you wear it with pride? Do you give it, do you wear it to honor and give respect? Do you wear it to the glory of God? One of my seminary uh, classmates, a really smart woman, Julie Kinnar, you may recognize that name. She's written some of the devotions for Christ in our home, and she actually has written the women's Bible study this time. She writes about this parable. She says, first century Jewish wedding customs held that the father of the groom was in charge of the event and bore all the expense associated with the wedding and the banquet that followed. Now, do not tell my son Andrew this, who is getting married next year. Uh, Julie writes, I've been told that in the case of royalty or the very wealthy, this often included providing a specially made garment to be worn over the guest's regular clothing. This wedding garment was presented to the guest upon arrival and donned immediately. Refusal to wear, to wear it was an insult to the father of the groom and could get the guest ejected from the festivities. So if we're at the party, God's party, the family of God, the baptized children of God, then where and what is our wedding gown, our magic cloak? What does baptism give us as our God-given ability? If the wedding gown represents our respect, love, and devotion to Christ, what is it? What, if it's not a literal robe, Maybe it's like uh, author Frederick Beekner writes on vocation. Vocation as the place where your deep gladness meets the world's deep need. The place where your deep gladness meets the world's deep need. What if our wedding gown is that? What if our robe is what God gave us so that we could make a difference in this world? in the name of Christ. Maybe it's our, our vocation, our job. Maybe it's our ability, our resources, our opportunity. Whatever it is that makes us what we are that meets the world's need. In this parable, eventually everyone's invited. Some accepted, some didn't. To those who came to the banquet, all were given a wedding robe. One didn't wear it. What if the wedding robe is baptism? In your baptism, you were welcomed into God's family. And you were commissioned to show your love and respect to Christ. You were welcomed into God's family and you were commissioned to show your love and respect to Christ in the way you live out your life. Remember your baptism. Wear your baptism. Whatever your baptism enables you to do, wear it. Do it. Wear it with pride. Wear it to the glory of God. It is a holy gift. It is a holy calling. Amen.